Hey guys, this week on the Awesome Cast, we talk about how robots can save us against gun violence in schools. And there's so much going on CES, I don't even know where to start. The class. All that and more. Awesome Cast. This edition of Awesome Cast is brought to you by PittsburghOnVideo.org. Check out the best videos from Pittsburgh all in one place. PittsburghOnVideo.org. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said now. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said. Hey, guys, this is the Awesome Cast, the tech show where we like to talk tech social media here in Pittsburgh, PA, representing the flyover states. I'm Mike Sorg, as usual, at Sorgatron on the Twitters, uh, on, with us on the couch, back again. We got a couple people in studio. Back with us again is Chilla, out ch- at Chilla on Twitter. It's cold. Out Chilla. Nothing gets pronounced. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. How are you doing, Chilla? Uh, not too bad. It's good to be back. Yes, yes, it's been, it's, it's been a lonely few Tuesdays. I know. It's weird. <laughs> I've been, I have couldn't wait to get back. I'm like, oh, we got to get to this. Um, and, of course, Katie Dudas. Did I spell everything right? <laughs> that is correct. Yes. At Kate Dudders on the Twitter. <laughs> How you doing? Good. How are you? Is this your, this your first time? You've been on other shows. Yes. And this, this is, is your first, first time, time on mm-hmm. the Awesome Cast. Representing with the Sock Monkey. I like yes. that. My little friend. <laughs> and of course, we know Chilla's story, but you, uh, um, um, we've been wanting to get you on the show because you uh, have been sharing a lot of social media stuff with us. <laughs> Tell us a little bit, you know, any background interest you have in that kind of stuff. <laughs> I have no interest in social media. I've never seen it before. <laughs> oh my God, what's Twitter? <laughs> oh my God. What's a podcast? <laughs> Actually, all of my friends are from social media. I have no real life friends anymore. Um, I, it's, uh, I've been fortunate enough to use social media as a as a friend making tool, I've also used it where I'm studying it. I am at Point Park in their communication technology major in, in a master's program, which is their new program for them. And they're kind of getting it off the ground, and I'm learning a whole bunch of new stuff about how I can use social media to improve the world. Excellent, excellent. And of course, it's not just us here in the studio. We got somebody remote uh, coming to us from uh, brainsoverbullets.com. We got Dean Petrella and Ray Russell. How are you doing? And of course, he's a little off screen, uh, but can you show us your little friend there as well for the video? <laughs> <laughs> right there. Uh, <laughs> there he is. Uh, so you Darth Vader also joining us as well. How you doing, guys? Great, thank oh, you. Good. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I didn't catch it. Where are you guys calling us from this evening? Beaver, Pennsylvania. Where? Beaver, Pennsylvania. Okay. All right. Excellent. And we're going to hear about what they're doing with robots here in a minute. But of course, this is the Awesome Cast. You can join us right there. You see in the corner of your screen if you're on the video at Awesome Cast. We are also uh, over at, of course, SorgatronMedia.com for all past episodes and all the different ways you can get uh, this show. But you can find us on iTunes. We're on the Roku via Blip TV. Of course, on Blip TV itself, YouTube, Stitcher. We are also starting to experiment a little bit with Spreaker and SoundCloud. Not too sure we're going to keep going with those services, but we just started them up. So let us know if that's somewhere that where you find podcasts and enjoy it let us know give us some feedback and let us know if we need to stick with that so let's get started we like to start the awesome cast with your awesome thing of the week and of course uh our friends here uh have brains over bullets uh, uh what what is this uh concept guys uh mike so after the after the shootings in newtown uh last year you know as technologists that really that really affected us. And, and with the pro and anti-gun forces kind of in a stalemate over this, we thought, is there anything here as technologists that we could do that might, you know, be some kind of interim solution or any, any solution at all that, you know, could help the situation uh, rather than this, this stalemate that it's into where, you know, both sides battle back and forth, and but nothing ever changes. So, you know, kids keep getting shot in school. So we had this idea about, could we build a robot that basically could intercept a shooter you know, once he'd entered the building and do something about it until the police arrive. Um, so, you know, we've started kind of a, a crowdsource funding site to see if we can't get some uh, to get some money to build the, at least the first prototype, which is actually sitting right here behind us. Uh, so, of course, we call him Bob for short. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's basically the genesis of where the project came from. Excellent. Uh, and, and, and what... 
Uh, tell, tell, give me a little bit of like, how does this thing work? Like, what, what, so when, when, when an incident happens, like, so this, this robot will actually go out and, and kind of respond in a way? Right. So, so, you know, basically what we do here is we build mobile robots. So, you know, we, we're, we're starting from, a, you know, from, from technology that we know. And our idea is, at least the first cut at it, is if you can imagine there's, in all these schools, there's a security guard watching a bank full of monitors. Uh, if he's watching these monitors and suddenly sees an intruder, you know, shoot through a glass window and enter the building, you know, if, if the system is set up in a way where he can take the mouse and basically click on that guy and said, that guy there is the bad guy, then the robot, you know, can have that information relayed to him and go to that position, at least in our idea is to distract this guy, interfere with him, slow him down, you know, for three or four minutes until the authorities can arrive. Mm. So that's basically the, the kind of the, the idea behind behind the robot. Not not that he's going to shoot the guy or tie him up in nets, but basically distract him with a number of these devices we put on the robot to keep him focused and occupied until the police can arrive. Okay, okay. I, if nothing else, I feel like like the fact that a robot is coming at him will be will be a good start for distracting him, right? Right, right. Yeah. That's the that's one of the things that happened is once those guys reach the perimeter, you know, they're king for four to five minutes until you know somebody with more force arrives. Mm -hmm. And we thought if we can fill that, that empty gap until somebody comes that has more weapons or the ability to solve the situation, then, you know, maybe we keep kids from getting shot or, or, or less kids from getting shot. Okay, okay. It, it's, a, it's a really cool concept. So, so um, you have a prototype. Um, like, what, what have you done uh, so far, like, with the prototype to kind of, like, as your kind of proof of concept here? So, so the prototype, the original prototype right now has, has four devices on it. It has a ping pong ball shooter that everybody laughs at until they have ping pong balls shot at them at 200 miles an hour. Uh, it has a fire extinguisher that, that uh, dispenses baking soda. It has uh, two fire alarms uh, hooked to it, and uh, it has a bunch of flashing strobe lights. So basically, you know, we want to try to impair their vision, their their sound, and their and their uh, you know their tactile function with just basically you know fire extinguisher foam, and then ping pong balls, and then this thing you know going just everything just to keep somebody from from focusing on any one thing other than this robot. Okay. And of course, there's just the size of itself. It weighs about 200 pounds. It's six foot tall. It's just the physical presence is going to be a deterrent. So just anything to slow them down, distract them uh, until the police can get there. So, so this is, uh, and, and this is remote controlled, like you say, the security guard would actually be controlling this thing? Right, right. And, and we started out with that because the initial pushback we got from everybody is, you know, because all robots, because of Hollywood, are, are inherently bad, right? Nobody wants to hear that there's an autonomous robot protecting their kids. So... The first pass at this, you know, we think we need to have, a, you know, basically a wizard behind the scenes controlling it. But ultimately, you know, as in all robotic systems, you know, they're going to become autonomous where they can think for themselves. So once the bad guy is identified, you know, it could have algorithms on board that basically are going to keep him occupied until help comes. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of challenges have you guys seen so far trying to develop this thing? Now, you guys, you say you, you build, like, this isn't the only robot that you guys work on, right? Yeah, we build robots for a living, you know, so this is just this has just been built from bits and pieces of what we have here at the shop. Um, so the, the number, you know, of course, as soon as you start talking about it, people come up with all the reasons it won't work. So, you know, one of them is, well, somebody, the guy's just going to shoot holes in your robot. And our response to that is great that he's not shooting holes in kids. Yeah, uh, there's the multiple floor buildings, you know, and that's going to require multiple robots. Uh, um, you know, if, if the rope, but mostly if the rope, the guy's got to enter the floor on the bottom floor. So if the, if the robot intercepts him there, if he decides to move up the floor two, then then uh, you're going to have to have a robot, you know, positioned on floor two, you know, to intercept him when he clears the steps. Mm -hmm. um, there's a thing that, um, you know, once the guy's in the building, you know, how are you how are you actually going to identify him as the bad guy? You know, that could be a judgment call. Uh, but the, the one thing that we did want to do is make sure there was no lethal or harmful deterrence on the robot. So we've always said it, if it goes if it goes berserk, the worst thing you're going to have is a is a grand mess to clean up. But you know you're not going to have anybody injured from it. It's okay. So 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 in mind, this is a disposable thing in, in case of, well, you know, the 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 when a horrible incident happens, which is you know I think fine as far as that goes. Better than people, like you said. So <laughs> it's, it's it's like the third row you know, the three laws of robotics, this thing's going to basically give its life to protect you. Yeah, yeah. And, and even though we're talking about the disposability is, is, is not important to us, but it will be hardened. It will be hard to make him dis 
this, to dispose of Bob will not be an easy feat. So we understand Bob will be under duress and, and great threat himself. So he'll be hardened and he'll be um, impervious to a lot of the projectiles that the shooter will be using. So um, Bob's going to be pretty re resilient in himself. So that, that's one of that's a good point, uh, Mike, because a lot of people come up to me and say, well, I'm just going to shoot holes in your robot. And I said, I've thought about this for like two years. Do you really think that I haven't thought that somebody's going to try to shoot bullet holes in it and that I wouldn't do something to keep that from happening? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm always amazed by that by that question. But, uh, yeah, we're going to make sure that he can at least take some damage before, uh, you know, he goes to quit. Uh, okay. so, so it looks like it sounds like you're 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 mainly focused on schools, of course, uh, and you know that horrible situ those horrible situations. But are are there other applications uh, aside from that target that you think this thing can be adapted for? A absolutely, you know, malls, any any public spaces, malls, uh, prisons. In fact, we you know we've had somebody already mention about that. You know, this would be a great thing for like a prison riot. Um, and, and, and the other question we've asked is, you know, if it was in a situation like a prison riot, it, it could be something more powerful than, you know, ping pong balls and, and uh, fire stickers. You know. Excellent. Now, you do have uh, uh, an Indiegogo campaign going on here. Um, right. For uh, Just look up Brains Over Bullets over there, Indiegogo. Of course, everything's at brainsoverbullets.com. Uh, so uh, how has, uh, uh, you know, how, how's the reception been? I know you have had, uh, you were mentioned in an article, uh, I believe that was the Beaver County Times, if I'm not mistaken, or? Right, right. Mm. Yeah, we've had, we've actually had, uh, we've had the two state senators representatives in, uh, somebody from Harrisburg called us last week doing a piece on it. But it's been it's been slow, and we were warned not to run a not to run a campaign over the holidays, and I think that may have bit us in the butt a little bit, uh, in the sense that everybody's kind of busy and not following typically their social media as well as they typically do. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I, it's not going to slow us down. We already have enough money that we can uh, do the things, the upgrades we want to, to get to the first to the first plateau of uh, of um, the working model. So. Yeah, it's not going. Whether or not we hit the number or not, it's not going to deter us. We're going to keep going. Yeah, and I found that too because I, I ran a uh, unsuccessful Kickstarter a couple years ago, and, and I find that even if you're not, you don't hit that limit or anywhere near it or anything, you do at least like you get no, the notice. And it sounds right. like you, you, yeah. know, you got some government, you got some newspaper notice, so uh, that can definitely help you, uh, I think, to the next step. So, so it's definitely just because just because a, a Kickstarter doesn't work out doesn't mean that's the end of the project. Uh, definitely. That's right. Yep. So. Um, uh, so, I mean, other than the holidays, uh, is there anything, any advice you can give other people kind of looking to get a project? Of course, you guys, you guys are making something uh, with this versus other people trying to do a podcast or you know a movie or something like that. Um, what what are uh, kind of the biggest hurdles that you're finding uh, in trying to get this thing out there? It's 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 funny because because of the social media. Even though you can get the word out, there's a million other people also trying to get their words out. So it's it's hard to get above the din. You know, I feel like I'm in the back of the room, jumping up and down, waving my hands back and forth. Uh, and as technologists, you know, we're we're geeky robotic guys. We don't have that that media savvy that we need. And I think Dean would agree. We we needed that. We needed to have like the campaign in place before we push the button. And uh, I think we pushed the button before we had, you know, we should have had all the people we wanted to contact lined up. So when it went out, it went out in a giant press release. Uh, and I feel like we've been behind the eight ball the whole time. Awesome, awesome. Um, awesome. So uh, if anybody wants to check, tell us all the places where we can find out uh, more about, uh, uh, you know, uh, what you guys are doing. Yeah, the Brains Over Bullets site. And then, of course, you know, our own company, ropedesign.com. You know, that's the, that's the parent company that's doing this work. Uh, but but the brains over bullet site's the best place to go if you're looking for information. What real quick? Because I'm, I'm looking, I actually popped over to your your other site and I'm seeing this kind of slideshow of some of the stuff. Did I just see a lawnmower robot of some sort? Oh uh, yeah, we if you, if you can drive it, we can turn it into a robot. That's awesome. So you guys are doing like Roomba for my yard because I could really use that. I'm really I'm really yeah. bad at getting my yard taken care of. The the bad thing about lawnmower robots in the United States is what we refer to as the tethered dog problem. Oh. Uh, so you can imagine robotic lawnmower, dog tethered in the yard, something goes wrong, lawsuits, publicity, bad publicity. Bad dog. <laughs> What's the, okay, uh, let's some fun. What, what is the craziest thing you guys have put together? The craziest thing we've put together? Holy cow. There's a lot of them, but I'm going to say one of the ones that I thought was pretty interesting and also pretty crazy was the FTX, which is a giant, um, looks like a big bulldozer, but instead of having a bulldozer lift in the front, it has a big 
what they call a tool that actually spins at 3,000 RPM and takes trees and actually wove them down the toothpicks. It's a pretty nice machine. And we, we did that, um, was that last year or year before? Yeah, two years ago. Two years ago. We, did a, we did an explosive pig collar for, uh, for tracking pigs, feral pigs in Pennsylvania. And it uses like a technology that NASA uses where you use an exploding bolt. So we got these GPS collars around these pigs. And uh, when it's time for them to come off, the last thing that the battery does is it sends this charge to an electric bullet and it explodes these collars off the pigs and the collars just fall down and the pigs are uninjured. There's okay, 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 well, well, thank okay. you, thank you. I was like, <laughs> thank you for clarifying. <laughs> so I, think, I think we almost had a PETA problem there. Um, <laughs> Everybody's I, thinking, yeah, there's all these decapitated pigs. One of the <laughs> <laughs> Obviously interpreted and visualized that completely wrong. Uh, but I think I found a picture of the this uh, this, this uh, toothpick making machine. Oh my God, that's, that's robotic. <laughs> Yeah, that's scary. That's a scary machine. It's a large machine. It's very powerful. Yeah. It was really impressive to see that thing under under um, under control. It was just amazing. Wow. So, and that's also remote controlled. Yeah, that one was remote controlled. From uh, it was they were clearing our artillery shells off a large artillery range, and they needed a standoff distance of about I think it was two miles. So the guys driving that from a remote location, Jeez. picking up artillery shells. Awesome. Excellent. So, hey, you guys want to stick around with us? We're going to talk about some awesome things. We're going to be talking about a lot of CES. Uh, I'd love to get some guys making freaking, I don't want to say death machines, but it's the first thing I think about when I think robots and that thing we just looked at. Uh, so, yeah, that's I want an machine. exploding collar. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome all right let's go uh down the line here uh chilla uh we were talking about this a little bit before the show you got something uh, I, I know we're, it, it, first week it's ces all kinds of crazy i don't even know if i caught up with half of what's out and there. there is it seems like this year where it's it's everyone's covering everything so you're getting inundated with so many I've products never from seen such a a scatter shot of random stuff. There's even, we'll get to even like video game stuff. You never see video game stuff anymore, like on the scale we saw this year. Uh, but we'll get to that in a moment. I think as long as you're not Michael Bay, you're, you're probably doing pretty good. <laughs> exactly. If, if, anyone, if anyone knows, he, I guess the teleprompter, it's, he claims the teleprompter messed up and then it got reversed and he just got flustered and, and walked, walked off, off stage, the stage and then blogged about $3 it. $3 million dollars by <laughs> Samsung, well spent. Um, but he, he is more, he's doing yeah. endorsement. He was doing some other stuff too. So it was just a bad moment. Uh, but still, you. so some things that might work, so, so one of the things they they, they showed, and there, Asus makes one, and there's there's another company from I think India that's making one, and it's a hybrid Windows and Android tablet. And the thing that that I've seen in prior tablets is they either have to be rebooted. It's kind of like imagine your any other machine running multiple OSs, um, but this lets you instantly switch between Windows and Android, and I've. I don't know if it's this one or one of the other and ones I think that I was said, looking at. I watched the one video. I think it was for this one. They said it takes about five seconds. Yeah. So and some of them, some of the other ones that I've seen, they're they're getting it to the point where you can actually, if you're familiar with Windows 8 and the modern UI, you can actually pin the Android app to the modern UI. So you click on the app and it launches the Android version of the app. Mm -hmm. um, so Sorg's question was, why would anyone ever want one I of just, these? I don't see, I don't immediately <clears throat> at least see the application of this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, using desktop, using Android devices, why would you want th do want one thing to, to, to really do both? So for, for me at work, we, we actually, the way Android and iOS work, it's actually a lot more secure from the containerization of data perspective. Okay. So we actually allow users to do a lot more with their Android and iOS devices that are personal to them versus their their personal laptop or desktop. Okay. Um, in that case, um, so we actually allow people to have offline data. Um, so on my Windows machine, my personal one, which I get a lot more battery power on, it's a nicer device than what's provided to me, um, I can't store any data. So if I get on a plane, if I'm anywhere without Wi-Fi, the device is kind of shot. Um, unless you have a, a MiFi hotspot or you're sitting at Sorgatron Studios where there's obviously a ton of bandwidth. Um, Fios, baby. I, I downloaded the iOS update today. Yeah. And it took an hour and a half from work. I got, and I'm like, I'm not even putting it on the tablet. I got here, it was like two and a half minutes. I'm like, 
This is nice. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But that's that, what you get for for that high grade blazing DSL. That's 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 what happens. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens when you cut the cord and just put all your money into internet. But so I could actually see myself, and then we're sitting here, and I'm thinking about it, and you know, there's times where I want to be able to take a photo that's on my laptop and post it to Instagram. Mm. You can't post to Instagram through a browser. You can't post to Instagram through a lot of things unless they unless they've recently updated this. No, I don't think they have. So you can only view. Now you have the Android app built right into the device. Okay. So <clears throat> and I've played around with some of this before like I'm using the there's some competition they're going to have with this through uh, AMD's making blue stacks. And then I've actually run the Android x86 project in a virtual machine on my device as well. Um, blue stacks works better than Android x86 at this point in time. But I, I do see a lot of use in it, at least for me personally. And I don't see why, if you're going to be a person that has a laptop and a person that's going to buy an Android device, why this would be a bad thing it just you're you're continually trimming down the number of devices that you have to carry with you mm -hmm. and it, this one's like a hybrid where the, the the top will pull off it has the detachable keyboard i think in the key the keyboard it comes with like an extra terabyte drive or something like that so i just really could see the point in it okay uh, even if you got even if you took that device and got it down to like a six and a half inch device with a decent keyboard, I mean, how many people, daughters, are carrying a phone, a tablet? I mean, you can get down to one actual device. I love, I love, <laughs> she's, wait, she's carrying that, that's the note, but she still has like a four inch phone. <laughs> so it's just like, I, I don't know. <laughs> but, but I could see it getting to the point, and, and we've talked about this before, especially overseas, where people can usually only afford a singular device. Mm -hmm. I just see that this bridging the gap, unfortunately, I think it could could do some damage to the Microsoft name if people learn, oh, I can just keep switching back to the Android you know, side. You know, and this, this there was a good, uh, I, <clears throat> I, you guys might have seen the article, or maybe I got this from you, Dutters. Um, uh, there was one, like the, the four or five tech trends of the new year, and one was this... Uh, people are going to re realize it doesn't matter what platform they're on mm -hmm. with online services and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mentioned like I, I was getting my grandfather together with Office 365. Somehow through something he ended up with a Windows 8 uh, uh, laptop and a Chromebook. Uh, but now his his office will work on both. So I'm like, hey, look, it's over here too. And hey, look, this Google thing we can do over here too. And now you can just pick it up and do it. Is that, was that, your, was that you? <laughs> Noodle! <laughs> um... <laughs> But yeah, this this whole platform agnostic kind of thing. We're getting a Windows 8 machine for down here. We're replacing this little Mac Mini. It's poor, oh, really? poor little Mac Mini. Yeah, we're getting a Windows 8 machine. It's like, you know what? I'm going to run a Wirecast on it. All the rest of the services are going to pump into it. It's cheap. It is cheaper than. I'm not getting a Mac Pro for down here. I can't afford that. Uh, it's so a tax write off. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a tax write off. <laughs> but I got to make the money first. Um, so, so it's a little bit of a problem. So uh, yeah, I, I love the idea that it doesn't even matter anymore. Um, other than that whole, again, grandpa calling me, what the hell do I do with Windows 8? <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Why did they change it? I've heard that from him and my sister and a few other people. Why did they change it? And, and then, Ake 1 got better. And mm -hmm. I have a feeling we're going to get to the point where you're going to get the option. You're going to get the option where you can boot into desktop mode. Because they're saying there, there's there's a lot of reliable sources saying... You get to pick your. You, I think right now, actually, if you know what you're doing, you can pick your boot mode, and then Metro apps will actually be able to be run it, as a window. So it doesn't have. They won't have to be full screen or run in that split mode. So I, I, I could see it. People that weren't comfortable with the change can can flip it back if they want. Which yeah. seems to be the way companies are going. Let's yeah. let's make a radical change and then let's just slowly reverse back to the way we used to be. Awesome. It's a good marketing plan. Yeah. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on this. I, I think this is one of the more realistic things they have going on. Usually we see these things that are just never, never see the light of day. And I have a couple of those listed there in the notes hopefully get to. Uh, but staying with CES for a second, um, PlayStation did something really interesting. 
Um, so they they released a service or talked about a service here uh, that they're calling PlayStation Now game streaming service coming in summer of 2014. Uh, so this year, uh, I, I think we've talked about last year, they um, bought Gaikai, I think is how we pronounce it, uh, that was kind of like OnLive. You know, on this show and other places, I've been really big on OnLive, this whole idea that you will be streaming your your video games from somewhere else, right? From from some server. So they're taking it a step up. This, of course, is going to work on PlayStation 3. It's going to work on PS4, uh, PlayStation Vita. But this idea that if you have a game on the service from the cloud, uh, if you look at the picture there, not only are you going to be able to play it on a PlayStation, you'll be able to play it on a television, a tablet, a smartphone. Do you think this will lead to a very Netflix base of, of video Jeez, games? Jeez, I hope so. If they... If, if, it's, if, if PlayStation now, I, I think mostly, uh, they do have like PlayStation Plus where they have like old PS1 games, at least on PS3, <clears throat> that they've been kind of letting you play. Wii does that too, don't they? They, they continually mm-hmm. release Nintendo, older Nintendo yeah, but, games. Yeah, but like per, per thing. Like okay. kind of like how Xbox is saying, hey, you get a free game every month. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think PlayStation's been doing that for several years. Um, but in this case, this idea that, well, if I want to play a lot of these games, I you know, granted, you're probably going to have to buy a Sony said device in any of these categories but still like i buy a tv and i can go play uh last of us and god of war and and you know other stuff like that that kind of changes things now you're why do i need a console for one thing i'm and does the i mean other than maybe some graphics rendering i do you really do you really ever need to upgrade or are they just no because it's streaming it's all streaming from the cloud, so they're doing all the processing on a server farm out there. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're going to still need a PlayStation with discs and all that kind of stuff if you don't have the bandwidth, um, because you're going to need a pretty good bandwidth. Because again, the problem with OnLive was, you know, it's got to come from the server to you. Every time you hit that button, it has to be instantaneous, you, because you're setting that signal how far away, and it has to do the round trip. I, I think it's a good idea in theory. I just don't think. Eh, maybe kids will be ready for it. I just don't see the mass mass consumption. I mean, look at my, Microsoft tried this, and they said, you know, the Xbox One, digital download only, online all the time, and people rioted. <laughs> and and now we have Xbox Ones with Blu-rays in them. Well, and, they it, well, well you also mm-hmm. noticed you also noticed uh, when when it came down to it, Sony pretty much announced the same stuff, but with a different tone, and they mm-hmm. didn't get slammed. That's that's it was all the way they delivered their messages. Yeah, I, it'd be cool to see, and I would like to see it where it's like an all you can eat. I pay X amount a month, mm-hmm. and I can tear through a bandwidth cap in minutes. Hey, are you guys over there, are you uh, are you video game players at all? Uh, yeah, but but asteroids and uh, uh, you know space invaders, that sort of video game. Well, you know if they provide that'll be easy for them to stream probably. <laughs> Uh, yeah. but, so, 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 so this per- the service will be perfect for you guys. It sounds like so. Joust and Dig Dug were two of my favorite old school. There you go. Oh yeah, yeah. We lost our, our two young engineers uh, a little earlier today, and those would have been the guys. I think uh, Brad just got the um, Grand Auto Theft Five or something. Yes. He was talking yes. about. Yes. His mom was wanting to know why he was prepositioning prostitutes on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's that's the internet though. Um, excellent. <laughs> Uh, Dutters, what's your uh, awesome thing of the week here? See, this is a good segue because mine. It, I, I'm going to talk about a new newer app, but I'm going to have to use my tablet because it's an Instagram based app. See, see, look at that. We're playing friends. Now I wonder if I can see. I'm going to try this out now. Yeah, see if you can pull it off there. Um, everybody, the big deal over the last like the last few weeks leading up to the, end of the year was a big thing with Statagram was having your top five Instagram, top five liked Instagram photos. Uh And you got a nice little slideshow. It had some music. It was very uh, lovely, fun times. Um, What a lot of our top fives were not exactly what I were expected to be. Mine, my top fives were not at all what I thought they were going to be. And they were kind of disappointing in a way. Not that I didn't appreciate what people liked. It was just like, oh, they're all selfies. I don't, not that full of myself as much as it may seem. But there's an app called Flipagram that allows you to kind of create your own kind of video memories using your Instagram photos. And it's a real simple, real basic looking app. See, very pretty. And all you have to do is you sign in with your Instagram. 
I actually downloaded this like last week. Yeah. And then you have all your videos up, all your photos on here. And you select however many you want to put in here from your whole Instagram library. Or you can even use your gallery if you're not interested in using it. Um, I'm a big purveyor of porta potty photos if you ever follow me on Instagram. <laughs> and um, what you could do is you select a number of photos. Like, bloop, 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 bloop. Let me find you some more porta potties. And then after you select your photos, you add music. And you can either use your own personal music or you can find music. And they allow you to use snippets of pop songs, which is very exciting. Um, of course, most party party photos should have the song Timber with catch. I like the song, as sad as it is. <laughs> so you does can, it pull from their audio or it pulls from your? It, it, it's your choice. Okay. You can either use um, your personal audio or you can add, um, use, when it comes up, it says my music or find music. Um, if you use the find music, it'll give you basically a, a list of pop songs. And you can either use this 30 second preview, which you're not going to make a super long video, so you only need the 30 second preview. And um, it allows you to uh, pick a song and then make it a beautiful little thing. And then you can name it. Um, if you get a little more into it, if you want to pay a little bit more, you can have a watermark so you can save it as your personal own video. Um, but it was it was really fun to play with. I, I did make a very very nice porta potty video. If I wasn't sure if you could pull it up from my link. Where or is it? Did it track? Or did it work? I, th this is where we run into problems. You can't pull up my Instagram from. Well, I have. I just have oh, a link sorry. for Flipagram. Try this again. Okay. Come on, friend. Look at this, all this technology, doing stuff. Pay so it. it must require something newer than gingerbread to run. Mm. And it is on iOS as well? Yes, it's on yes. both platforms, um, which is exciting, because usually I, I tend to miss out. Try that. So, oh, is it in the thing? Does it save it? Hey, there it is. Magic. All right, I'll get that here in a second. Um, so, I mean, this is like, like, I know this is one of the things that came up, um, cause I was like kind of looking at all the different ways to do like a year end mm -hmm. kind of thing. And this is, and there was a lot of that, uh, Google plus did an auto awesome that just took like moments from mm -hmm. your year. It took videos. It was, it was really nice. There was like maybe one thing I would want to change. Um, is this, oh, well, this, so this is your video and yes. uh, sorry for you guys on audio um, and, and our guests because we don't have video going to them. Um, so this is going to come up here and it's a nice through <laughs> of porta potties. <laughs> With royals. <laughs> With royals. Because most of my potties are royal flush in case you didn't notice. <laughs> and I'll tweet that out here on the uh, awesome cast and just <laughs> porta potty party. Thank you for ending that with my. Uh, speaking of GTA Five, I sent her the first porta potty I saw in GTA Five last week, so so that made it in there. Um, uh, the nice thing about this is you can share it multiple multiple ways. It's not necessarily just on Instagram. You can send it as a link. Um, you can send it to your friends. You can embed it in a hangout. Does it does it post directly to Instagram? Because, yeah. Because Statagram was annoying because mm -hmm. it made the video. Um, these year-end videos, you had to download it, and I couldn't get it to, maybe just because I'm newer to Android, I couldn't get the save to the right place to be able to send it up. Like, it would see it, but it would be grayed out. Mm -hmm. So I was doing something wrong there. It worked a little bit better. And then it wouldn't work on my Gmail downloading it and uploading uh. it back up. I had to actually load the mail app on iOS. So I was having all kinds of trouble trying to get these. Yeah, I was able to share it wherever I wanted as far as, like, a, a normal link, almost. Yeah. So awesome! I am gonna. Like I said, I'll now, can this. you actually say? Oh, can you actually save it? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> my my like, it only runs in Inverted portrait. Mode? It, you, well, like square mode, you mean? Or? No, and no, like it makes your it won't run with your device like it won't run with your device like this. Okay, your device has to be like this. And you're doing it oh, well are you, are you on. In a VM, it doesn't understand rotation. It, it doesn't get me either. Look, we're so so. I, like <laughs> I, my laptop, for those of you in the audience or on audio, I'm sorry. I have to turn my laptop on its side, and then because it's flipped, you have to know. Like it's really awkward to use the touchpad. Like, those on audio, he is turning his laptop cause, sideways, cause I, guys. But then, but then, oh wait a minute. Okay, but you still use the track side normal. <laughs> 
but I can run it. Yes. See, if, if you had Android on your tablet or on your Windows device, you could also run this. <laughs> then you would have been able to toss it over. It's just really weird. But it it does allow you to save your videos. So if you want to come back to it later, like my porta potty videos here. So I can go and toss can it Can you on. download it to the device too? Like, like I was not able to. So okay. you're not able to throw it like on YouTube or something. So that's one thing I did just for my posting purposes. I, I just threw it on YouTube so I could put in a blog post uh, when mm -hmm. I was talking about these. Um, so that could be handy. See, but the nice thing about my tablet is I have the option when I share it, I get the whole list of things I can share it that's to. That's true too. That's true too. So I, I don't know if I don't know if I get that on my side of it. I, they, they've been opening that up a bit more. I just threw some random stuff in in a, in a thing. It's like my last four photos. Um, <laughs> I'll see if it does the I mean, same no thing port -a -potty. for me. Oh, it just saves it straight to my camera roll, actually, oh. on iOS. So, uh, and there, there you can go anywhere. And as far as, and it's got the standards. It's got, it's got Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, email, uh, when you do it here. And uh, Bobby just retweeted your video. Yes. <laughs> so awesome. Awesome. So that's uh, Flipagram. Uh, and you can go, I think that's flipagram.com uh, if you want to check it out. And it just sends you, it's in your app stores and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Uh, so it just like sends you a text uh, for whatever, you know, appropriate app store you have. So awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So with that, uh, we, we have, like I said, we have a bunch of stories here from CES. Uh, I, I want to go to our guests. Have you guys have you guys been following CSS much? Uh, uh, CES? CSS? Oh yeah, it's most definitely. Uh, is, is there anything, uh, I guess, in your field that's really kind of popping out to you? Yeah, the the interesting thing is like like three years ago we probably heard the drone the word drone four times. Last year we probably heard the word drone you know like fifteen times. This year, two thousand thirteen, we've heard the word drone like a thousand times. So you know the 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 interest in that is just exponential. So and and at CES you see there's already a bunch of drone technology being being uh, shown there. Awesome. So that's exciting. Awesome. Any, anything in particular that sticks out to you? Um, the one that had the built-in pan tilt camera. You know everybody's been kind of scabbing parts together, but this company looked like they uh, it was it was called the Phantom Two. Okay. It was like a white, very streamlined looking robot with a built-in pan tilt system for like twelve hundred dollars. $200, oh, wow. you got a flying camera in here. The Munz will on that next week. Yeah, Munz, Munz will get on that, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, uh, Munz is on our, he was on our last, uh, our Christmas special. Um, he's been, he's on his second one, I believe. Um, I think, I think one went into the river. Uh, so. That's funny that you mentioned that. We just repaired one that somebody tanked into the river. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a common occurrence, it sounds like. Yes. Airplanes always crash. You know, that's kind of a, that's kind of a, I'm actually an aerospace engineer, so that's kind of one of their things. They they tend to crash. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> awesome. Oh, and another thing. There's been a few different trends. Of course, TVs are all over the place. Curved screens. I don't know. I, I'm not really sold on it. I it's four, gimmicky. 4K displays. Yeah, like I heard them on one show <laughs> trying to justify like, well, I have a big room and I have it up on the wall, and if I'm in the corner, then I can see. <laughs> what? Here's <laughs> here's where I want the the 4K display for me is huge, because. 1080p and hooking up a computer to 1080p mm -hmm. is horrible. The resolution <laughs> is terrible. We're complaining about 1080p. <laughs> Think about but this. It, no, but the problem is, is 1080p when you hook up a computer that you're no, you're used to seeing, like I don't even very know, very high res. A very yeah. high res. I'm sure. I mean, like the fonts are like the size of my fist. Like it's hard. To, it's it's awkward. <laughs> it's like using Android rotated on your laptop. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work right. I, but I, I, I we're can, used to it. I mean, I'm looking at. I have a 2007 20 inch iMac in front of me, and that's uh, running at. Uh, uh, actually, around 1080p, honestly. So, uh, not exactly, but uh, so so we're used to that at that size. I'm, and then you're blowing up to like 50 inches, so you have to fork, go 4K. Uh, they're talking about 100. Uh, there was a hundred uh, 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 inch display that they're selling that was like 400 pounds. Um, like that's where you need the 4K because you're just going to be large pixels at that point. What's the What's the other metric on the 1080p? It's 1080 by Good Come on, video guy. Good question. <laughs> but I mean, like, so I'm right at 1440 by 900. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, on a now think about it. You're taking a 11 inch or 20 inch display and blowing it up to 40, 50 inches. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, that's where I'm 
I want to replace my TV with a 4K so I can actually get a decent look to having something like a computer hooked up into it and then replacing using that as like a media center type device. Uh, the uh, actual resolution is 1920 by 1080 or 2.1 megapixel. Okay. Think about that. So our yeah. f- think about what your the pictures your phone is taking. <laughs> and, and if you if, uh, if you took that picture, it's bigger than your TV resolution wise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So so anything you put up there, one they're going to look pretty yeah. good because they're they're going to have to be actually scaled down, right? Uh, <laughs> for the most part, so that's amazing. Um, but other than that, uh, wearables has been pretty big. I expected a lot of stuff from glass, but there's actually I knew this is going to happen. Everybody's got a wristwatch. Yeah, and there's like the wristwatch. There's like wristwatches that are also like heart monitors. And look at us, we created something that looks like the Fitbit, but it also LG tells you it tells you who's calling you. Which I think I think Fitbit actually has some notifications in their last edition. Uh, Do they have caller well. ID though? I don't know if it's caller ID, but <laughs> I think they they at least got the the, the time on. So there. who's mm-hmm. calling me and interrupting my run? Well, I'll tell you what, though. I'll, the Pebble today, mm-hmm. I found another great use for it. I don't have touch gloves. Mm-hmm. so But guess what? I can actually look to see, like, who called me, cancel the mat, like, all that kind of stuff, because it's buttons on the side. So I didn't have to take off my gloves to do <laughs> things today. Where it's, uh, what was it, negative? negative yeah, negative 30 degrees negative with 30 the wind chill, here standing on a T platform. And, and I'm sure there's others that are much, <clears throat> much worse out there. Uh, I don't think it's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I, well, I know uh, Pebble themselves, they actually had, like, they're, they're saying, hey, we got this down. I think they got the technology down. Now they are actually working on the design of the Pebble itself. The next one is going to be more stylish, for instance. Well, it's not going to be, that's not necessarily the next one. That's just another one. Another one, okay. So, because yeah. they're going to continue with again, the exact Again, it the, was the a one they have. flurry of yeah. stuff. Well, I'm trying the to weird get thing, it. too, I. And, I saw some blurb from the CEO, and it, it, he was coming off as like, if 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 that's all you took away from our our keynote and our our discussions was we're coming out with a steel watch, please pay attention to the other things. They're actually going to have an app store mm-hmm. now, Good. and they're they're doing a lot with content. The other interesting thing that I thought was with the latest OS update, they enabled they're enabling more hardware in the device. So obviously. They they had the forethought to put in stuff that they weren't going to use in in the first couple of versions of the OS, like Bluetooth LE is now enabled, and I think there's some part of the accelerometer or something. But I thought it was pretty cool. Cool, they're getting an app store, so mm-hmm. that's pretty impressive. Um, the other thing we kind of expected this uh, Google Glass, of course. Uh, uh, there's there's a lot of applications coming out for it. Um, there's also a lot of competitors coming out for it. Well, we've been seeing them leak out here every so often. Uh, but first, like, like, here's one. It's a, uh, a, a, a Google Glass controlled treadmill. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Um, but, okay, that makes sense. I'm, I'm presuming just it, uh, actually there's a video here. Um, um, and, Sure. Yeah, I, I can see fitness working out. I, I can see, you know, much like your watch, I can see you, you, you running and, and, and information mm-hmm. pops up as well. Um, that seems to make sense to me. Um, the bottom, I put a bottom link in there. Um, the other the other huge thing that I'm seeing coming out of CES is cars. Mm-hmm. And, but before we get to that, um, Hyundai is going to integrate glass with their cars. Yeah. And you're going to be able to unlock and lock your cars from glass and do some other things. It's it's leveraging their Blue Link service, which allows any Android or iOS or I think even so, BlackBerry. And I'm device, not familiar but, with this Blue Link. So so one of the you know discussions is, you know, how much are you really going to use Google Glass while you're driving? How much are you going to be allowed to? I, well, I, okay, the thing they're, they're saying is like uh, uh, lock your door, uh, stuff like that. I mean, that's really the only thing I see in this article at least. Um, and, and it's one of those things where you you don't realize it that you want to use it until you want to use it. Okay. Um, for example, I never really cared about being able to remotely start my car till it was really, really cold. <laughs> and we were actually fortunate enough to get a new car over the holidays, and it does have, I can, through my phone, start the car. So we were in the mall finishing up dinner. I left the heat on, 
and remotely started the car and it was nice and toasty warm when I got there. Mm -hmm. The thing for me is not necessarily that. The One of the things that I constantly forget to do is turn the lights off on the car and then you end up with dead batteries mm -hmm. and then your wife gets really pissed off when the car doesn't start. <laughs> so it actually, you can turn the headlights off. So if I think, oh, did I forget to turn the headlights off? I can now click Which them. And then I took the other car today and hopefully she's not listening because I left the car in the parking lot with the lights on all day. But that the car Oops. started and I got here. So <laughs> life is good. Um, but I, I don't know. There's a lot of features that I didn't think that I would care about with the Blue Link package mm -hmm. that was pretty cool. And, it, and it's not just them. Uh, Google, of course, also announced an open, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not open. I, I keep wanting to say open handset alliance. Like, well, I guess it is open automotive <laughs> still, alliance yeah. with Audi, Honda, GM, and more. Uh, so now, so so Linux even more so is getting in our cars. At Which this is point. interesting because... QNX, QNX, which was a company that was bought by RIM, which then became BlackBerry, yeah. was huge in cars. Like, Audi was using that. Like, there was a bunch of car manufacturers mm -hmm. that that, it's all Linux-based, that that OS was running in a lot of cars. And now you're seeing Google take over that those a lot of those relationships. Mm -hmm. What will be interesting is, uh, and I didn't see, I know Ford was doing some stuff. Ford's been a huge Microsoft. Yeah, did I hear they're partner. going to be moving away from that? I don't know. I know. Um, I think it was Audi that said they're going to actually their console device is going to be a tablet that's removable. And I like that. I, I think that was a lot of because um, there's been a lot of talk, of course, of Apple also doing uh, some automotive mm -hmm. integration as well. And I like that idea. I think theirs was more. This is the base of it. Your iPhone's the base of it. It just interfaces with this, so you don't have to worry about that brain in your car getting old because you're mm -hmm. you're going to be buying a new one every year, two years, however you do your iPhone. Anyways, if you're buying a car like this, you're probably buying your phone pretty regularly. Um, uh, hey, what do you guys think uh, there on the other end? There, I, I, have you been looking at a lot of this um, kind of car automation and, and, and integration stuff? Yeah, Mike, this is very interesting what John was talking about because this starts playing right into, into our little world. Uh, you know, basically everything we do here, even though we build mobile robots and bulldozers and stuff, the focus of what we do is ultimately cars that drive themselves. Um, so John's in the mall and he can start his car, but imagine the day when he walks out of the car, out of the mall and it's 30 degrees below zero and the car is sitting right there at the curb. <laughs> I could, I could How about we just do this? We'll mod my car that I have now. We don't have to make it autonomous. Let's just make it where I can like remote control it. We'll throw a webcam <laughs> on the front I, mirror. There you go, guys. He is offering his car for you guys to experiment <laughs> on. While you're at it, can you put one of those crazy wood chipper things on the front of it too, so he can get through rush hour? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that, be, I mean, that I could, I could definitely see people using that. And think, of, think about it this way. Now. Uh, if you you go to work and you send the car back home mm -hmm. and the wife goes to work, I mean it could definitely yeah. I saw it's there, definitely there was one demonstration um, where they are they were demonstrating on the road um, what happens if if the person falls asleep. So you just like took hands off off pedals, it dings five times and then it just like slows down. And they said if it's set up um, and, and nothing responds after a certain time, they will actually call for the police and everything. Um, like that's. That's important. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the kind of thing, you know. Um, uh, you know, if they get corrective stuff where they're just like, you know, something comes up and says you're driving too erratic, and you know, and there's maybe measures to help you out, you know, if you, know, you were an idiot and got too drunk or something, mm -hmm. or something else is going on, you know. Uh, how many people have a heart attack and wreck their car? You know, well, right? how many people? How many people? Their kids are home for an hour before they get home, and, and they're not of driving age. Not, something happens to them. If they can get to the car, the car can get them to seek medical attention. Well, yeah, I've seen that in a movie. <laughs> wait, wait. No. You know, the same thing has happened in a movie with a car, and the same thing has also happened in a movie where they're riding a horse, and it just takes them to the Hot, Hot Wheels says Kit. Kit, I think there that's you go. The <laughs> night Industries. I mean, isn't all this, the, the, the vision of this is Kit, mm -hmm. just like the vision of yeah. 2015 is yeah. Black to the Future 2. Uh, uh, you know, we all want the Kit car. And now, and now we, we have the thing in our car that is talking to us, you know, with Siri or Google Now, um, and it just needs a little bit more of that automation. It, it's coming together. Well, that's, yeah. the, that's the one thing that I think we're, it's interesting, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting to see who 
comes out on top and, and first place, second place, however you want to look at it. Because I noticed one of the links you have in here is the Jarvis, which is Intel's headset. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it it's more along the lines of a Google Glass where it's voice activated, but it's without the glass video part. It's more sending you which audio is, yeah. information, but you can talk to it. Um, it's like if you had Siri in your ear, I guess. Right, but it, and it's interesting because I would I think I would use Siri more often if I didn't have to hit a button. Mm -hmm. Like if I could say "Okay Google" mm -hmm. or "Okay Glass," mm -hmm. like I could see myself. And I think people are picking up on this because Intel's doing this, and Nuance, the makers of Dragon Dictate, I forgot to put this link in there. They're going to have software for Windows that that's actually coming bundled for free with like, I think it's like Acer and Sony, Toshiba, a bunch of them, where it's going to be the, the Siri, OK Google type competitor, where, the, where you can carry on a conversation with it, much like you can Google now, where you can say, who, um, what was one of the examples they gave? Uh, what film like they were asking questions about Pulp Fiction and they said who else is in that movie and like it can pick wow, up on the fact where it's contextual nice. based on a conversation uh, Ray you, you want to say something over there uh, yeah I was talking about you know there, there's been lots of complaints about this increasing amount of, of uh, data and communication that's going on in the cars but like just what you said, all you can see all the pieces coming together. That once the cars become fully autonomous, then the the car can become a working office, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to want all that tech in your car. Um, so I, I think it's not like there shouldn't be a pullback from the technology of you know this information and tablets and things like that being in the car because eventually it's going to be our mobile offices. It is. It is, and, and it's going to be smart enough that it's going to say, okay, hey, hey, stop, stop working on your 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 thing. You're late for for work. Uh, you should probably drive now because it's icy out, you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, stuff like that, a little bit smart. Whereas I have to think about, eh, it's wet, I shouldn't put use the cruise control, you know, and you get lazy. It's like, oh, crap, it's raining. I should have, I should have turned it off like 10 miles ago, you know, yeah. uh, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, What's the contact lenses thing you have here? I didn't so open it. So this was interesting. I, I, I'll pull up the link here, uh, uh, Chilla. Uh, it, 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 this is... This is in so my eyeball? It's in your eyeball. Wait, wait, wait. It's more to it. It's more to it than that. It, it's not exactly just in your eyeball. I, I, again, That's I'll pull insane. up this video here. Uh, so the idea is you will wear this contact lens, and it'll, there's there's parts of it that will work, but it won't entirely work unless you're also wearing, you know, basically shades. So, so uh, guys, on the video here, so you see yeah, yes. this, so you're looking down a thing, and it looks like it looks like your windows are popped up and pinned to your vision at this point. Uh, it's it's like if I... It's like if I physically surrounded my face with multiple Google glasses. Um, we should which, try that. Which just <laughs> just just kicks something off on my on my glass, by the way. Um, so so and then I'll, I'll check this video. Um, so, but but most of that interface doesn't really happen. And this is all. This looks like it's all prototypeish. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, you know, crazy. Man, people were, ner were nervous about privacy with people wearing glass. Really. Yeah. <laughs> so this is like like they make their demo look out like this is your Iron Man computer. Right here, but or you become all, the Terminator. But it's it's supposed to be like you reach out and you see it in your vision and and everything like that, and it moves with it. And you see, you got your cool shades. You know that looks a little better than Google Glass. But you see how it's like doing your object recognition, which you know we you know we got guys from CMU, you know definitely working on that. You know they got to uh, talk about last last year. Um, I mean this this is it's just another you know kind of way to go about it. Uh, I don't know if this is like. This can't be this year. Um, or I would totally Android wear these. Phones. Well, yeah. If this is, is this for real? Like, I, don't like I realize Google Glass is not the future. This is the point we're at. This is a stepping stone, right? And this is going to get better. Um, you know, we're talking about Jarvis doing the same thing in here. I, one thing I'm noticing is a lot of the, the Google Glass, I don't want to say wannabes, but I want to say inspired by maybe uh, things going on, are always like, well, it's Google Glass, but it doesn't have a camera. There was actually a cool um, safety glasses that do the heads-up display Google Glass thing. Uh, I worked at safety training uh, uh, videos for the steel industry. I would, I think that would be amazing that they would, they have to wear their safety glasses anyways. Most of them don't, for whatever reason. But if it has, like, a readout of, like, you know, what's going on in that 
you know battery or something or you know what you know whatever they're doing you know uh, i i think that would you know be really helpful with them the, there's a prototype and it syncs with android smartphones so mm -hmm. i don't know yeah. if i sent you the article or not but there were people who were doing um I don't want to say, it was electrician, an electrician doing work, and it was all heads up display of telling them exactly how you had to do this. So, are you te essentially having people like you or me doing work we shouldn't be doing now? Or maybe we're working, you know, they, I, I've seen it for as far as a mechanic, this is all, you know, prototype things. It's, it's just taking that augmented reality and taking it from this step to just right in your face. That's right. That's right. I mean, we, we already have, like, we've had AJ on the show talking about the giant manuals that they would have to take around with them. They're just putting them on iPads now, mm -hmm. and that's so much easier. But now if they put it just right up here, that would be tremendous. Mm -hmm. um, another kind of side on that, um, there's been, like, I've been listening to a lot of stuff from people saying, well, well, I, I hate the idea that I actually have to look up to look at Google Glass for the thing to happen. I want it to be right in front of my vision. Do you really want it right in front of your, like, there was actually a pro, the one they're showing off at CES, it was glasses. Because uh, we've seen this, we talked about some of these like glass up. I think it might have been a version of glass up actually, mm -hmm. where it actually does project it on the inside of the lens on your glasses or shades or whatever they have. So it is in the middle of my vision. You're definitely not doing that while you're driving. I'm sure there's like some kind of use case where that makes sense, but I think like the whole it's off the side is more important than, than that going on. Oh, we just lost our guests here. We'll see if we can get them back here. Um, but I, I don't. What do you What do you think, Joe? I. I think it would be more distracting. I I don't I like the you kind of have to tilt your line of sight upwards. Um, mm -hmm. I could see turn by turn directions where I might want those more in my field but of vision. But you still want it off to the side. I want to say even if you have a heads up display, if you had a, like you know the vision of you have a heads up display that projects like on your while you're driving, mm -hmm. you don't want that in the center of what you're driving and what you're doing. See, I, I'm guessing I'm, not used, I'm this... more used to needing directions in the case where I'm already out of the car and I need a street. I need to be a few streets over. Think about Pittsburgh with one one way streets and parking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're constantly walking a long way, from, from usually from point A to point B. That's where I would see it, or like augmented reality. Okay, Google, show me all of the coffee shops within a 200-yard radius, and I can almost see through buildings to, to find what I'm looking for without and, the look up. I think, it, I think there's use cases for both, and I'm just saying give me one that I have on a bar that I can slide up and down. Yeah, yeah, and that was one thing, the old prototype where they <clears> actually moved the thing mm -hmm. up and down, and you decided where you wanted that to be. And that could be a future thing. Maybe, I mean, there's already a hinge on this thing that goes side to side to adjust. Mm -hmm. Why not one that also goes this way? Right. You know, I mean, plenty of reasons, I'm sure, industrial design, but still, I could kind of see that happening. Yeah. So. Could you, but could you imagine having where it's in your face when you're driving through one of those blinding snowstorms and it tells you some sort of object is ahead um, where you could integrate, for example, like something like I'm just throwing ways out there where it could that, in, okay, this is going to be this far ahead of me over here. I should start paying attention to this, or maybe the road does this, or some sort of emergency mm -hmm. vehicle. I mean, there's just. I mean, if, if it if it happens as sort of an overlay, mm -hmm. like if we're going, maybe maybe when when we map all these and there are our automatic cars already know where all the sides <laughs> of the roads are. Which yeah. is something. Uh, the one thing they were showing off the automatic car, it, it they had done that in, I think in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and that's what they were showing off. There, there actually are like electronic markers I think out on the road. That's what they're gonna, probably going to have to end up doing. Um, sorry, uh, but that idea that like like hey, here's the lines of the road, you mm -hmm. know, like it, you know, overlaid over that, it, I could see that. But the way they're presenting it is like that message I get on Twitter is right here in yeah. front of my vision. I just can't see. Mm -hmm. I, what? And this is the first steps. And and but there's other companies doing it. Like I saw I, recently, I think it was this afternoon. I was quickly scrolling through all the CES stuff, and I think Garmin was talking about their new. Their new heads-up display for your 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 um, windshield on your car, and it's going to be something that projects right into your vision while you're driving. This doesn't seem like a so, good so, idea. I have to uh, see it, but I, I pe just mm -hmm. people have uh, they're they're not building it for just to build it. Yeah, I mean there has to be some kind of demand, okay, or someone thought it was a good idea. Here you go. Actually, here is uh, for you guys on video. Here's here's a the, this is the image that I saw. That I'm like, what the heck am I going to do with that thing? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's right in the middle of the lens mm -hmm. where you're 
it, and I know this is probably just a mock-up or something, but still. But what is it? I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm looking at. It's it's a dark gray uh, well, with I mean, you green. See, you see, this is the lens that you'd be looking through. So this is one of your, this would be right in the center of, of what you'd be seeing here. Let me see if I can pull up a bigger picture. So, but is it but is it highlighting the fact that there's something there for me just, to see? Hello, Francisco. Uh, that, uh, thanks for the update. Da, da, da. So this is like a text message, it looks like. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I don't but know that if i like that. That seems a little... Yeah. 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 Now, if there was a building there and it told me this building that you're looking at right there is blah, 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 blah. Okay. And here's a history of it. Overlay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, kind of like when we looked at the, the contact lens and you mm -hmm. know, when you're looking and it's identifying and just like we see in the movies, like this whole kind of contextual thing where, where they can they can go through, identify, and, and, and do an overlay. You're not really, it's not covering anything, but it's enhancing what you're looking at. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to get our friends back here, but we did get some stuff sent to us from the chat room. I definitely want to uh, bring up. Uh, John sent us a few Instagrams, actually. Uh, of stuff. So here we have uh, this is uh, uh, from that Chris Gore up on Instagram uh, for you guys on uh, video. Uh, it's it's uh, trying on clothes digitally could be in your future. So there's this big thing. Uh, it looks like it's, it's sort of an augmented reality. Uh, you see a picture kind of uh, 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 reflecting back, and 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 you're seeing clothes just kind of like again kind of overlaid over you. So I wonder if there's kind of like a, yeah but it says move around. So I guess it like follows you kind of connect style. So I can see that happening. That could be fun. Uh, we also have, again, same thing, uh, Alcahoot. Uh, it makes getting drunk fun. The smartphone breathalyzer. I won a breathalyzer contest over Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I, it makes sense. I, I like that, you know. Um, Maybe maybe you could maybe you could uh, line this up with like untapped or something. <laughs> that's when you can actually prove yes, I am the most drunk. It's like there's an extra that's an extra set of badges on top of craft beer that you could be getting. <laughs> I mean, I could be lying about these things. You don't know I'm actually drinking these beers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's proof right there. That's like driving by a place on Foursquare and checking. Yeah, in. it's kind of the take care one. of those people. Uh, we also last one. Uh, the mom brush with apps. Oh, I heard about this. Mother. What's that? It's mother. Is, it, is he talking about the mother app? No, no, or the no, mother, it's the little right here, right here. It's, it's oh. a toothbrush that connects to your smartphone, so you make sure your kids are actually brushing their teeth. Nice. This is not a For problem. For when you really don't want a parent. <laughs> <laughs> Shove them in front of the Xbox and have their toothbrush hooked up to your smartphone. And <laughs> but it makes sense. It makes go play sense. with your breath It's Android only, by the way, from the looks of things, so... Uh, so th 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 this is this is where it gets interesting. If I just gave you a link for Mother, um, it was something else. It looks like a nesting doll. This thing is like a little critter, and then you have these things they call cookies, and you stick them on different objects in your house or people or like things that they carry, and you can determine when somebody comes into the house, when somebody. I mean, it's a very. They look like little nesting dolls, like they were mm -hmm. described as. And uh, it'll tell you different temperatures of things. I mean, there's all these little nuances that this thing is supposed to measure. How much are these? Oh. Two, 200? I mean, there would. 222 for a base unit and four cookies. Mm hmm. What? Mm. I'm guessing the cookie is like the nested doll. That it's, the, it's this little it's, tab. Oh, it's a little tab. Yeah, I don't know if I have a better out. article. Hmm, I kind of like this. So, I mean, okay. beyond the toothbrushing, we can check everything you're doing. Oh. Well, because I was thinking today... That looks like an alien from, like, Doctor mm -hmm. Who. I was thinking today, like, I wish I had an extra webcam that I didn't mind if something happened to it because I wanted to put it downstairs in case my pipes burst. Mm -hmm. And I kept looking, because I have Nest, so I'm looking at the temperature inside the house, hoping that the furnace can keep up with the cold outside, which it did a pretty darn good job. It couldn't, it couldn't maintain the... 70 degrees but it, it it peaked at 66 the house stayed at a constant temperature but i wish i could like put one of these in sense like is there water is there whatever mm -hmm. which i i want one of these well that's now. the next thing is like you know we're doing we're doing a quantified self we're you know we're, we're putting sensors all over our body with fitbits and everything we're doing the same thing with our car mm -hmm. why couldn't we do the same thing with our house mm -hmm. you know i mean we already have the thermo thermostats one sensor when you have nest do you have like multiple like kind of thermostats amongst if the you house, if you have or? if you have multiple if your house is 
heated in a fashion that you have multiple thermostats in your house, mm-hmm. then you can use multiple thermostats with Nest. Um, it replaces your thermostat. It does give me like humidity readout. It does give me current temp, requested temp. If there's been motion detected recently, that kind of thing. Um, do I? Ha- are they in multiple rooms? Can I tell temperature differential between rooms? No. But it's kind of. Uh, I guess I could put one in there, but then it's going to get all confused because it's going to say, "I'm not hooked up to a furnace. I don't have anything to control." Uh, you'd, you'd need some other kind of weather gauge device <laughs> to throw around. Um, John shares another one here. It's the iBaby. That's B A I B A B I H D. The world's first Skype wireless baby monitor. Really? That's taken them this long to do that? Um, Maybe it's just because it's Skype? Because there's other ones that are non-Skype. And this, this is the, the comment on this one is, could a wireless baby monitor just be training your child to be a cam girl? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing that freaks me out about those is, do you really want someone hacking into that device? Mm-hmm. I think if you're a parent, you're not thinking about something like that, unless you're really spooked on this NSA stuff. Oh, I've Which seen... is a whole other issue. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean let's, let's say, okay, let, we need to presume. Oh, okay. we, we no, different a, ones do different things. Link. What's happening? You got to presume. She's it's, showing it's, me her tabs. The, the mother tabs. Oh, okay. It's the second link up there. But it's like, <laughs> it has like, it's these little sensor see. pieces that you can throw around your house. Yeah, I'll pull that up too. Yeah, it's but, a second. But you got to presume, if anybody's going for any of this stuff, about this quantified data that they're collecting, you have to have thrown that whole idea and worry out the window for that kind of stuff so all right on I got, that note, oh, i got two go quick things for you i'm okay. sorry no problem one's for you okay Woo-hoo. equal the jot utility yeah that you that you purchased for the wife for the wife yes now has evernote integration oh nice they announced that at ces nice i'm so sending that to CES my wife news um LG is bringing back WebOS on their TVs, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I heard about this. Uh, also, Roku is being integrated in some TVs now, too. Yeah. And then just real quick, upcoming and awesome. Um, we're probably about a month out for the next version of iOS. And I'm hearing there will soon be an Xbox One OS update that will bring a lot more feature functionality as well as they're saying it will actually streamline the OS. It will actually use less electricity. Oh, so it's good. pretty impressive the things they're doing through software updates. But um, um, and I do know, I think they're, that's also going to bring the streaming through Twitch TV because yes. I, I knew that was an early 2014 update. So, And I think it's going to bring some more. One of the things that I'm actually not too happy about, um, the ability to stream from like a home share or files from a computer or whatever around your house yeah you actually have to go to said computer and tell the computer to stream that one exact video to the xbox so there's no way to like kind whereas of like select. 360 you could kind of browse yeah your network yeah i i even there was even that's a, not there's even a plugin i can put on the max to make it work right i would see it yeah that's not it's in reverse so you have to go over to the Mac and say, I think I think at this, this point for that, they're presuming you have a laptop on you, which isn't the way no. that you would use it. I, 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 yeah. I It's got to be it, or, or they don't want you to use it. I don't know. It's, it's weird. There are some kludge workarounds with a with a tablet and a laptop. and. I, yeah, you always log me in over, and yeah, exactly. Well, there's, a, there's an ac- application called Skifta that's pretty cool. If you get a chance to check it out. I was just hearing out. about that, actually. But. So, guys, uh, thanks once... Uh, we lost him here on Skype, of course, but uh, be sure to go check out uh, brainsoverbullets.com, of course, to find out about the uh, the uh, the robot they want to put in the schools, the Bob. Um, and you can find out all the other cool, cool oh, stuff. Um, hey, is this the first robotics people we've had on the show? That's I, I think, think so. so. I, I think so. Yeah, we'll, have to, we'll have to keep that up. Um, you can check them out at ropodesign, roprodesign.com as well to find out all the cool stuff they're building over there. Uh, so so thanks again to uh, Ray and Dean for joining us here and uh, and joining along in the conversation. Uh, also, thanks Dutters, at K Dutters, of course, on the Twitters. we got to have her back soon. I wanted to talk all about social media and all we did Stop. was CES. We have so much CES, though! <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Maybe I'll come back, I guess. Please. You can come in remote if you, if you can't make it. <laughs> If you, if you can make it in a negative 30 degree weather, <laughs> I think you can make it again. 
so uh, this on is, a warm day. This is becoming this is kind of our, our South Hills contingent of, <laughs> of, of podcasters here. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> we need a so, gang. We need some signs. Exactly. South Hills represent. <laughs> so who's for real? Um, <laughs> So with that, hey guys, it's been the Awesome Cast. Of course, you can find us out. We're on Twitter at Awesome Cast. We're on Facebook. We're on Google Plus. A lot of good conversation happening there. I know we like to share a lot of stuff throughout the week. Um, like there, there's a tweet right there from us. Um, <laughs> in your face. <laughs> in my face. See, out of my vision. That's fine. Uh, and of course, you can join us uh, every Tuesday night at six thirty. Change that. Six thirty p.m. Uh, Eastern Time here at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, of course, we're on iTunes, Roku, Bloop TV, YouTube. Let us know if you're using the speaker and the SoundCloud when we post this as well. Uh, some uh, good options, or let us know if you will, at least in the future. Uh, with that, for uh, thank you to our awesome chat room. Send us some great links all night. Um, thank you to our awesome... Wait, I forgot how... Thank you to our awesome guests. <laughs> You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. We